Welcome, I'm John Caldera, president of the Independence Institute and your devil's advocate. Thank you for tuning in. So later on in the program, we're going to take a look at the beer wars. That's right. Can you buy a beer in a supermarket or can you not? It doesn't go away. But then again, neither does beer. But first, I take a quick look at the civil unions bill, which passed the Senate last week and is going through the House right now. Will it live? Will it die? To talk about it, two young Republicans who I predict in 10 years will be bald and crotchety, including Troy Ard, who is the state chairman of the college Republicans. Yes. Glad to have you here. Good to be here. And Jimmy uh, Sangenberger from Regis College. You have a yep. podcast and a show that gets a lot of traffic. What's the, what's the website people can go to to find that out? Sangcenter.com. Sangcenter.com. You can spell it out like you're singing a song. Sangcenter.com. Good self-promotion. I like that. All right. First of all, give me an idea. What, what does this bill say? Let's start over here. What, what, the bill that popped out does what? Well, more or less what it does is it gives very much the same rights and privileges and responsibilities that come with marriage for uh, gay couples so that they can have access to uh, different marital benefits like uh, medical care decisions and being involved in inheritance rights, uh, different things along those lines that um, really without giving marriage in and of itself and using that term still gives many, uh, virtually all of the same rights and privileges under state law uh, when it comes to gay couples getting together in a civil union. Didn't, didn't, we, didn't we vote on this just like five years ago and it, and it got trounced? It did, but because we have a ban on gay marriage, I feel that we're, we have an ethical crisis right now of equal protection because certain people aren't able to have the benefits and the privileges that other people have. And it's not the government's job to determine what relationship is valid in the state. The reality is that the government's job is to protect everybody equally. And the only way that we can do that and solve the ethical crisis that we have is to grant equal, prote equal protection through... Uh, the civil unions bill, and I think that this bill was crafted very well to do that. Well, what's what's great about how it's crafted? What what's well crafted about it? Well, it has some pros and cons. But what's great about it is that right now we have a ban on gay marriage, and this is an attempt to respect that because it doesn't come with any of the financial benefits that you have through gay marriage. You can't have a marriage tax deduction, but at the same time, it grants the equal protection of being able to make health care choices for your spouse and it grants the ability to take care of your family and give everybody an equal opportunity. I've always, I've always been confused because we've got gay marriage and then we have civil unions mm -hmm. and to me they seem pretty much the same aren't they? You're telling me the difference in this bill is that while you can have a civil union you're still not married which means no tax deductions you can't put it on your tax form but mm -hmm. other than that they're the same, right? Well, not exactly, because this bill allows for heterosexual couples to be able to form a civil union and to be able to get together and have those same rights as someone who would enter into a marriage if they choose not to enter into a marriage either. So heteros, straight guys can get, get yep. together and say, we're going to have a civil union. Mm -hmm. Why would you do that? You're still going to have to get a divorce later and you won't have to get a benefit on the taxes. How, how stupid do you think we straights are? All right, let's bring it over here. Now, both of you guys are young Republicans, yep. and you both support this, and, and f I think for some different reasons. And this, this is a new face to the re Republican movement. Tell me, tell me, Jimmy, why, why do you support this? Well, You're a Republican, I, for God's I, sake. I, I know I am, but, uh, you know, if you look at the direction that society is going in terms of gay adoption, in terms of couples, gay couples that are living together, to me, what this does is this just solidifies their access to many of the rights, privileges, and responsibilities of marriage, where, say, you have children. It, it means that they are not deprived of the ability to have, say, inheritance rights, or your, uh, your partner, you can have the benefit of spousal privilege, or you can have the benefit of wrongful death claims, those kinds of things where if you're in truly committed relationship, you have the ability to access these kinds of things. It just makes logical sense to but those, those me. But those too. things are still available now to gay couples. They just have to do the paperwork. They need a power of attorney. They need to have a living will. They need to designate heirs. They need to do those things that they, they can already do. So what, what does this give what does this give a gay couple that they can't do with filing the right forms uh, uh, with their lawyers? Well, I think the, the, when we get into that, that's where we can see that the real heart of the argument is about limited government, and it's about government responsibility. Government's job is not to 
treat people differently based on personal choices. And if you cannot enter into a marriage contract, it's not the government's job and it's not the government's responsibility to separate gay people, straight people, or people who choose to marry and people who don't choose to marry. You shouldn't, it's an undue burden to have to fill out paperwork that a married couple wouldn't have to fill out. And so we have to hold the government back and apply a I conservative under, I understand standard. your point, but l let me press you on this. Given where we are, it, does this law, if it becomes a law, does it give gay couples anything that they can't already have if they do the legal paperwork now? Well, yes, it gives them the ability to be treated equally as other members of society and to not have to fill out multiple forms and receive no government recognition of their partnership and their choice. And as far as gay adoption goes, that also is a sticking point because it allows these people to have what is considered to be a normal family. And government is what's pre presenting people right now from being able to have a family. You know, if, if you think about it in a legal sense, marriage is a contract between two people. And what a civil union is, is it takes those very same traits of a marriage and then applies it in a situation where it's not considered marriage. So essentially what you get is the uh, a legal connection between the two that you can't get when you have to file all sorts of different separate forms. It says that there actually is something binding these two people together. Uh, not only are you the chairman of the uh, College Republicans, you're also openly gay. Yes. Which is, I don't think people realize, there's an openly gay chairman of the College Republicans. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, and, and, but neither one of you are married, right? Right. All right. So hang on a second. Well, you can't be married because you're gay and that's not allowed. You, I'm pretty certain, haven't kissed a girl yet. So when that happens and you actually get to the point where maybe you want to get married, is this law going to uh, affect you? Well, it'll certainly affect me because if I choose to have a family, it will allow me to have a recognized family and to live a normal life that, that Jimmy, if he's ever able to find a woman, um, he will be able can, to have himself. He can always hire. So, you know. Is that, more, that's not legal either. Though. That's not legal either, but if some guys, that's the only choice they have. The, um, Let's bring it here, and I, I want to get into, the, you're both young Republicans. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about the generational issue. Now, I know you have different, different feelings on, on this law and what you want, but in essence, you both support this. Is this becoming more of a norm for, for young Republicans? That's an excellent question. I think so. I think uh, if you look at kind of the social conservative, social moderate, social liberal kind of divide, college students tend to be a lot more socially liberal or, or progressive, if you want to use that term. On gay adoption, for example, uh, they're lockstep in favor of that. Um, don't ask, don't tell, very much in favor of the repeal that was recently passed back in December by the Congress uh, and, and civil unions as well. The divide, I think, that still exists, though, amongst college students, especially college Republicans, is over gay marriage in that particular issue. I think most support and favor civil unions, but like myself, are hesitant about gay marriage altogether. But will that change when you get older? When, when you start seeing things. Let's, let's remember, when you're in college, you're in a very weird, vacuous world that isn't reality. Will you, do you open up the possibility that a lot of your comrades might change their minds as they get older? I think it's possible. We've seen society change over time. I mean, what, 10 years ago or a little over 10 years ago, we passed the Defense of Marriage Act uh, under President Bill Clinton. And um, yet over that time, there has been the expansion of gay marriage and other similar things like civil unions at various states and so forth. So you have seen that growth over time. And I wouldn't be surprised if you saw that continuation in the future. But that doesn't mean that necessarily we want to advocate it for it right now. Uh, as an openly gay Republican, mm -hmm. you were elected to be the chairman of the college Republicans for the entire state, right? Right. So all the college campuses. Mm -hmm. uh, what does that What does that tell you? Uh, do you agree with Jimmy? This This is changing. That young Republicans are much more open to this idea. Oh, absolutely. There's actually uh, the co-chairman of New York State is also openly gay, and although that's New York, there have been several articles coming out about me being openly gay and supporting the civil unions bill. And the only reaction I've ever had that was negative was actually from the Democratic Party. Uh, the Republican Party has not said anything that wasn't supportive or encouraging, whether they agree or disagree on the issue. And I think it's not just a generational change among my generation, but I actually see the Republican Party, because of our renewed focus on fiscal, re fiscal responsibility and tax issues, 
uh, changing their focus as well because this is not something when you are urging people to, to judge fellow citizens, that doesn't win as many votes. And I think we've, we're starting to see the social issues movement waning to a certain degree. Then um, tell me the difference between the two of you when it comes to gay marriage. One of you supports it, one of it doesn't. You both like civil unions, but for different reasons. Let's start over here. So Colorado has a ban on, on gay marriage. It's, it's not going to happen. So even if you get the civil uh, union bill, you're still not going to have uh, a federal recognition of, of that union. And so you asking about yeah, gay marriage, the divide there. Um, well, I, I believe I do favor that uh, ban on gay marriage in the state, and I'm glad that it was voted on by <clears throat> by the people as opposed to judicial edict like in some other states. But what we've, what we've, if you look at the development of marriage over time, it began as a largely religious institution, and eventually government got involved and said, look, we want to create something that's more of a contractual obligation to handle inheritance issues and medical care, so on and so forth. And what you've had is sort of, uh, in, in some people's minds, the divide between civil and religious marriage. But I would contend that they are inseparable, that you really have society that connects the two, binds the two together, and society recognizes the, uh, the definition of marriage that is largely perpetuated by the government, by the official recognition of marriage. And so the, you, I, you I think want that the, ban to stay? Yes. Civil unions, no gay marriage. Yep. Civil unions, what about gay marriage? When it comes to gay marriage, I think that the ban itself uh, while it is a state's right issue, and I think that the state has the right to do that, I do not believe that the ban is appropriate because I honestly believe that it's an undue burden not just on the individual, but on the church. Because if a religious entity chooses to allow for gay marriage, they're no longer allowed to do that. And marriage is a personal choice, and it's based upon your beliefs and how the individual defines marriage. And as long as we have a ban on that, government is defining the ability of the individual and prohibiting them based on their religious or other beliefs to to enter into that contract and so I don't necessarily uh, oppose lifting the ban on a political level I support lifting the ban on an individual level on an individual level yes yes See, I, right I, now I, if you're if you're a member of a church or a cult or a sect mm -hmm. if that if they want to recognize your marriage they can do so mm -hmm. it's not legally recognized but in the community of your religion, it certainly is. Well, sure, and I could uh, right now say that I'm married to Jimmy Sangenberger, and you could declare us married, but that marriage ha serves no purpose in Trust society. That's, that's the closest he's going to get to a kiss ever. <laughs> All right, we've only got a few seconds left. Is this thing going to pass into law real quickly? I think it is. I'm hopeful that it is. You're hopeful. I don't think it is. I think, the civil, I think this House Senate bill is dead. What about you? I think as long as we can get it past the House Judiciary Committee, there will be enough votes on the House floor to get it passed. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Stay tuned. We're going to be talking beer. Oh, yes, lovely beer. Don't go away.